The hottest Hollywood drama this summer has the entertainment capital's movers and shakers on the edge of their seats. The story of tough-talking private eye Anthony Pelicano, a real-life gumshoe who saw himself as bigger than life, bigger than anything on the big screen. Now what'll it be, kid? Me or the cops? The kind of private eye Hollywood invented. He's like a character, a very minor character in The Sopranos. He's a pain in the ass. Anthony Pelicano first made his name in L.A., helping make drug charges against automaker John DeLorean disappear, even when the feds had DeLorean on tape with cocaine. Gold. <laughs> in the 1982 overdose death of comedian John Belushi, Pelicano helped lawyers get reduced charges and prison time for the woman who admitted giving the fatal injection. Playboy magazine lionized the Chicago native as a wizard America's most tenacious private detective, and high-profile cases kept rolling in. The first childhood molestation claims against Michael Jackson didn't stick. Anthony Pelicano. After Jackson's attorney hired Pelicano to snoop around, comedian Roseanne Barr used him to find the daughter she'd given up for adoption. And comedian Chris Rock's lawyers got Pelicano's help to fight off a paternity claim. In a town of outsized egos and incomes, Tony Pelicano was the go-to guy to take care of life's annoying problems. He sounds like a living B-movie. He is a B-movie. Yeah, he's sort of a jerk. Peter Bart is a one-time studio head, now editor-in-chief of Variety, the industry bible. You'd hire him for what? You'd hire him for intimidation. Because even if he doesn't tap phones or if he doesn't push somebody around, he, he, if he surfaces, you know, People, people don't want someone like that around them. That's his business. He became a scary figure. You could not make the Anthony Pelicano story. Nobody would believe it. Too far, too fictional. Makes the Da Vinci Code seem absolutely dead on factual. Entertainment attorney Peter Deckham. Why is it so unbelievable? The fish on the car is enough. Hand grenades, fish, wiretapping, threats. Big players, big cases, major Hollywood names, major non-Hollywood names, it's overwhelming. Pelicano actually was accused of ordering a dead fish and single red rose placed on a reporter's car mafia style to scare her off a story about a celebrity client. That led police to his office here on the Sunset Strip where they found grenades and plastic explosives. And that put Anthony Pelicano in jail where he remains today. And they found something else across the street, a gold mine. According to federal indictments naming Pelicano and a dozen others on racketeering and wiretap charges, investigators found computers with thousands of hours of illegal recordings. The heart of the prosecution case are these 10,000 tapes that they seized from Anthony Pelicano. And initially, they couldn't even listen to the tapes. They were encrypted. They had to enlist the NSA to get the help. Lori Levinson is a former federal prosecutor who now teaches at Loyola Law School in Los Angeles. But now that they're listening to the tape, they're bringing down many important people in town. And what do the tapes reveal? Well, the tapes reveal that Pelicano was wiretapping everybody, including his own clients, in violation of the law. And that's making many people here so very nervous. The Pelicano tapes and what and who may be on them. The reason this is the... the investigator from hell is that he was tapping everyone. The, the people who hired him were being tapped. I mean, and that is indeed, could be the ultimate nightmare, is that the scary things he could do to people's reputations is limitless. Powerhouse Hollywood attorney Burt Fields, with clients like Tom Cruise and Steven Spielberg, used Pelicano extensively. He hasn't been indicted, but he said he was brought in for questioning. Also questioned by the grand jury, former super agent Michael thing. Ovitz, whose lawyers reportedly Time. hired Pelicano to investigate to people bad-mouthing him. And Paramount Chief Brad Gray was questioned too. Among the scores of victims named in the indictment, celebrities Gary Shandling, Keith Carradine, and Sylvester Stallone, targets of Pelicano's wiretaps and illegal background checks. And among Pelicano's alleged accomplices, two cops, a telephone worker, and a computer whiz. Also nailed but pleading not guilty, big shot attorney Terry Christensen, who allegedly used Pelicano wiretaps in a multi-million dollar divorce case. High profile divorces were a Pelicano specialty. So you're warned that Anthony Pelicano is on your case. Yes. What does that mean? Judy Green knows. 
It means that you are supposed to be in fear, terrorized, unable to sleep. Uh, you're going to be followed. You cannot talk on your telephone without wondering who's listening. You cannot speak confidentially to your attorney because your phone is probably listened to at home and on your cell. You, your personal information is no longer your personal information. You cannot put your garbage away. You cannot function as a normal human being anymore. Judy Green lived the life of luxury with her multimillionaire financier husband, Leonard, rubbing elbows with world celebrities. When the marriage failed, the divorce was ugly, and Tony Pelicano appeared in the flesh. I pulled up right here to walk in to bring my dog inside, and immediately this Mercedes pulled up behind me perpendicular and blocked me in. She didn't know who he was. And he gave me this look and folded his arms and stood there. The menacing, bullying tactic, his body language said everything. And I thought, this is somebody related to this divorce. I don't know what it's about, but I've already been warned about Pelicano. Her suspicions were confirmed in 2003 when she was called in to testify before the federal grand jury looking into Pelicano and all those recordings. A financial ledger belonging to her now deceased ex-husband showed a $25,000 payment to Pelicano for, quote, legal fees, L. Green divorce. For Judy Green, a lot of things now made sense. I had many incidents that now that I look back, I was run off the road numerous times. I was threatened on the telephone at night um, and reported this to the police. I had the brakes on three of my cars disengaged in one week. I had the gate of my home disengaged for five days during that same week. I had the tires slashed of my car after I testified. There are numerous incidents that even like, a, like an onion, the layers are still unfolding and unpeeling. The real mystery is why intelligent people would risk all by employing someone, says Variety's Peter Bart, who was known for bending, if not breaking the law. Why are people who are making 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year practicing celebrity law why would they jeopardize their reputations? Do you realize how profoundly stupid that is? I mean, that's the big question in my mind. How could these people be that arrogant or that stupid? You know, I think lawyers want to win too much, and that's what happened here. You had lawyers who wanted to win, and Anthony Pelicano was bringing them the goods, bringing them the information that they could use to win and find out about the other side's case. Law professor Levinson says it's a classic case of situational idea, ethics. In the Hollywood culture, it's the idea that, you know, we don't really have to play by the same rules. We represent the stars, and whatever the stars need, we're going to get for them, regardless of the rules. But now there may be Hollywood's version of hell to pay. Divorces, movie deals, celebrity contracts tainted by Pelicano's handiwork may all be undone. A lot of people are going to be bankrupt. And that's one tip of many icebergs. Another iceberg that's drifting by the Arctic Circle is what happens to those cases that were decided based on evidence that was obtained through illicit means. Are all those cases going to get thrown, thrown out? And the answer is maybe. There will be huge lawsuits that result from this. You know, people are going to sue the law firms for the wiretapping. The people are going to sue the law firms to undo prior judgments that were obtained by using illegally obtained evidence, but they're going to file many, many lawsuits, and they already have. Judy Green may be next. I am contemplating this now. The problem is I would need an attorney to do so, and the thought of having to deal with yet another attorney is more revolting than following through and getting what is rightfully mine. Pelicano is scheduled to go on trial in October, but with prosecutors saying there will be more indictments, it's looking like a long, hot summer in Hollywood.